Toronto After Dark is this amazing week-long sci-fi, fantasy, and horror festival that's been taking place at the Bloor Cinema here in Toronto for the last three years. And this year, they featured this awesome movie called Who is K.K. Downey, which, while it isn't a sci-fi or, or fantasy movie, is actually this really cool indie comedy made by a bunch of hipsters in Montreal about a fake literary genius named K.K. Downey and hipsters in Montreal. The whole thing takes place in Mile End. It's got a lot of nice scarves, a lot of really nice hats, and some really fucking good haircuts. So we're going to go hang out with two of the guys that helped co-write and co-direct the thing and talk to them about what it's like being hipsters from Montreal with funny haircuts, making movies about hipsters from Montreal with funny haircuts. <laughs> If you want to come to this party, come th come on through. Yeah, well, my character KK goes through some pretty dark stuff. How does a gangbang on page four sound? That sounds pretty good. You you wrote about a gangbang? Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg, buddy. I mean, there's coke binges, there's prison time, there's drug binges during gangbangs, there's cocksucking, uh, there's cocksucking for money, there's cocksucking for free, there's anal sex, there's anal rimming. Mild bestiality, giving and receiving of facials, giving and receiving of pearl necklaces, Dutch door, Dutch oven, windmill, pinball, pin cushion. He finger banged me and then cock banged me. Yeah, my mom saw it, she was, oh, she's very supportive, of it, but she was like, you made a movie. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that, she was just trying, she was very sweet, she was trying to find the thing, the words that would be the most positive without actually committing to an opinion of the movie, so she was like, you made one. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad, I don't even think my dad knows what the hell he even saw. All he cares about is this shit man. Are you gonna need that bass to play my songs? Give up. Can I get my book published? Maybe I'm just a bad writer. A band sucks and nobody will publish your book. The old bottom line is, nobody wants to read this kind of thing from a middle class suburban white kid like you. No one's gonna publish this. Ever. It's unpublishable. What if K.K. Downey, your protagonist, wrote his own book? Let's create K.K. Downey. The idea, it actually wasn't, to be honest, it was kind of just it wasn't hipsters exactly, it was just partying. That was kind of what we wanted to make fun of, was that lifestyle. Like, I guess the arts lifestyle. But as well, yeah, I mean, you know, we're making fun of those, you know, people who take themselves too seriously and yeah. live for the art and all that kind of jazz. Yeah, I mean, it kind of is like, I mean, it's not so far off from what those, that neighborhood of Montreal is like. I mean, people, it's just, a, it, it's our lifestyle, I think, so we were kind of inside of it. And when we were poking fun of it, we were easily just poking fun of ourselves and the way that we live our lives. Yeah, I mean, those, all, most of those characters are just amplifications of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's really not that big a leap between myself and the character I play or anything like that. So, and I do think that uh, what our movie does have, and I think it's possibly what makes people angry, is it's actually kind of, you can see that there's a little bit more love towards the hipsters than other people have. Where hipsters sometimes burn people up and just make them so angry. I feel like these are kind of loving caricatures of the community. Mm -hmm. These are people who are kind of ridiculous, but, you know, yeah, they're human beings. They're, you know, they're absurd, yeah, caricatures of what the real people are. KKK Downey! KKK Downey! KKK Downey! KKK Downey! KKK Downey! Whenever we tried to shoot like a party scene, we're like, oh yeah, well, we're, we're just going to get people to come and we'll send out a Facebook and an email being like, be here at 11 a.m. and fucking nobody would show up, you know? And it would be like, we commissioned out this casting house, which was great, and they would get us free extras. We couldn't pay for extras, that's why we're in the dilemma. And she'd show up with, you know, people that were like 11 years, like kids that were like 13 <laughs> and 12 or 11, and it's supposed to be like an after party with a bunch of idiots in their late 20s, and it was just such a mission to uh, we, make it feel real, or I mean, it was just so stupid that we, th we thought we could write that and that we would be able to execute it. You know? uh, the opening of the movie was supposed to look like the opening of Michael Mann's Miami Vice. 
Like, you know when they go into that club in Miami? Have you seen yeah. that one? Like, yeah. The, 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 the yeah. Movie? They go into the club. That's what we wanted that uh, that initial party to look like, the one that Terrence goes to where he sees Sue. And that's the way we wrote it. We're like, oh, that's going to be like, it's going to look just like Miami Vice. Like, we'll underlight like bar tops and it'll, we'll have all these people there. It'll be great. It'll be so easy. And then we got to the set and it was like six extras where they were like, oh, it's not going to look like the no, no, scene of Miami not. Vice. Uh, were you able to make anything work with like, the thirteen-year-olds? Like, are there thirteen-year-olds yeah, hidden in those party scenes? Yeah, like, we'll kind of turn them around, put a hat on them, uh, get them smoking cigarettes. Which yeah, we tried this one kid. This one kid we traumatized because we were. I was like, I smoke. Can you smoke a cigarette? And he was like, I don't smoke. I don't want to. I think it was a particularly stressful time for me on set. I think I actually barked at him and. It was not one of my favorite. It, it was like one of those sad things where he was like, you could tell that by he, he was holding putting his wrong fingers he, and he didn't know what. And I was like, it was like his mom, if his mom had seen it, she would have been so disappointed in him. <laughs> like, that was the way, that was his response. Like, you know, when you, like, you know you can't do something because if your mom sees it, you're just, you're just going to let her down in a way that's going to break your heart. That was the way this kid was with smoking the cigarette. He was like, I, 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 I can't, I can't do it. I think he was just being difficult.